So this is a uh, short video showing some of the issues concerning tough certification in Germany. I mean, basically, uh, a few people have asked why it's so difficult. Um, this has been around about a year process now. I've been through the uh, test centres numerous times, and uh, there's one in particular that specialises in this this type of vehicle. Um, so some of the specifics uh, I'll go into today, uh, specific to this car at least, anyway, and. Um, so for instance, this car is registered in Sweden, it's fully road registered, it's also FAA uh, approved. Um, so theoretically you'd imagine that being another EU country it should easily get through the German uh, TUV system, but it just isn't the case. The, the, the levels required for approval are, are difficult to say the least. So uh, I'm going to pull some, uh, some of the key areas out today of why, why this process can be a little bit time consuming and, and tricky. So. Here we go. So, uh, as an example, uh, here are the original Italian um, homologation documents. It's probably 70 odd pages. This goes into full detail of every every aspect of the car, all technical data, the, the, the panels, systems, hydraulic systems, whatever. Uh, it's all in there, so that, that that's been quite useful for for making uh, a case to get this approved in Germany, and uh, you know just some some of the things that they look at, for instance, um, or, or requirements are, are quite typical across the world, um, but the the standards seem to vary uh, in Germany uh, that make this process really quite quite tricky and time consuming. So, I mean, from general things like um, exhaust emissions tests. Okay, these original uh, Swedish documentation um, uh, registration documents are here. Um, but things like this, for instance, I had to go to the um, spring manufacturer, and luckily um, they've been really, really helpful. These guys, these Falconer Springs, I mean, they make springs for F1 cars, rally cars, Olins. Um, you know, they've they've been really good. I mean, some of the some of the things that are required here, you know, the the free length of the springs in in length, uh, the inner diameter. Um, clearances, the total coils, the materials, specifications, um, you know, they, they really do um, go into such minute, um, which makes this, you know, quite quite tiresome, to say the least. Uh, just general, uh, for messung, a German word, um, a geo uh, documents there. Um, here we we require Dynagraph, um, and, and the reason for this is one they can pick up the the max speed on such a heavily modified vehicle. Obviously, it's a, a one-off, so you, you can't just state a, a, the speed of the original car, or uh, you know it's got to be proven. Um, so we've got a lot of Dynagraph here, uh, and also this this is used for calculating uh, how they do the sound test. So, for instance, if the uh, max power is made at say 9000 rpm i believe it's something like 50 percent of that say say four and a half is where they do the sound test and it's got to fall within a certain limit which i think is just about 92 decibels at, at that level um i mean some of the swedish paper as i said earlier it's uh, fully fia compliant so this cage for instance it's it really is a work of art and the, the details that are logged here all signed and certified by approved motorsport body in Sweden um, so you know it's, it's quite an expensive and detailed process all the photographs all the wells serial numbers of all the equipment all signed by various engineers and um, yeah so uh, what we'll do now I think is just have a little look around the car and show some of the some of the areas that I've, that I've had to work on um, so just when I stand from a distance here I can see that originally in the middle of the bonnet there there was openings for the way the airflow went through the radiator and then it scooped upwards out the top of the bonnet. Uh, so obviously uh, to fit a grill there, I mean, that's a, a relatively simple example. Um, and then things like the, originally the car looked like this. So big Larry, um, full aero uh, pack on the car, you know, from all of the, 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 the complete flat body, um, big wings. The, the front diffuser, rear diffuser, um, it made it very difficult to um, register the car, in fact impossible, it was certainly not acceptable. So that's all gone, new panels made. The flared arches, there, there is homologation paperwork for those, 
um, but you're only allowed a 2% extension of the arches so you're quite limited in uh, what, what you can do. Um, you can see aero catches on the bonnet there. Um, originally it had some different catches but uh, I had to fit these. They're a flush fit and that, that's all that's accepted really. Yeah, if we uh, now go on to these windows, I've had a lot of problems with these actually. Not the fact that they're polycarbonate lex and whatever, macrolon, whatever you want to call them, um, but the certain certification standards that they expect to see. So for instance, I've put these special certification stickers on here um, that show that they meet the required specification, but getting hold of this data is very difficult. Uh, you know, there's a, a approval in Germany, the AGB I think it's called, and these are uh, different depending on where, where the windows are physically located, so in this case, you know, whether it's A pillar back or B pillar back, uh, you know, they, they have to meet different requirements. Um, just trying to think what else from a, from a visual perspective, yeah, uh, I'll just walk around back here. I, I, it, this light here, um, this needed to be ear proofed. This, this light here for the uh, number plate, uh, it's a, another European standard. And if it doesn't actually have that E number on there, you know, it all just gets uh, rejected. Um, so it's, it can be daft little things like that. So changing lights. Um, one of the recent tubs I went for, let me see. So these, if you look on any other car, tire valves uh, they're generally rubber there's uh, another example here these are rubber um, but they they wouldn't accept those I had to fit these uh, solid metal ones where there's there's no movement they, they for whatever reason they wouldn't accept uh, the the normal rubber ones which are on probably 99% of the cars um, what else we have oh the headlights so when we were in uh, for, for the side lights, they were originally in here. Uh, these these were used for when it was formerly a, a race car. They're multifunctional, quite clever lights. You know, they can indicate to side lights, very bright lights. They're, they're, they're quite good. But the original placement is inside the the head lamp unit, and they wanted to see them there, and they wanted to see a more conventional, say, natural light. It was deemed the other ones were too bright, wrong location. Um, so we'll go have a look inside the car now. You know, I, I will be honest, some things were not acceptable just how it was built. So there was no hazard warning light. And I fitted I fitted that recently. You know, that's, that's a fairly simple, normal thing you'd expect. Um, brake bias, they actually go out and road test the car and they check the brake bias. And luckily I've got an adjuster here because originally it was out of bias, it was too heavily rear biased um, the steering wheel uh, it was it's a detachable wheel but that's not acceptable so I come up with a solution for that whereby uh, effectively the steering wheel is now solid can't be can't be removed not without unbolting it like a like a normal steering wheel um, so what else in here our seat belts they were another funny one um, it's got harnesses in here. Everything's FIA approved, actually. Um, you know, from when it was racing in uh, series in Sweden. Um, but these, uh, these are not acceptable. Um, so standard seat belts are in there as well. Normal, you know, lap restraint belts. Um, the seats they have to be adjustable on rails. Uh, obviously, you need to have some way of demisting. Um, so this, this was. Fitted. And if I go towards the back of the car, again, hair catches were picked up, rear wing, that's all now changed. But inside the, the, the back here, we have the fuel tank. And this had to be removed. All of the, um, all of the pipe work had to be removed, sealed up, and then a basic pressure leak check was carried out i think it was uh, 0 0.3 bar had to be held for 10 minutes and all certified um so yeah that gives some insight into exactly what the german system's like and some of the requirements 
hopefully that will give some others a little bit of help if they ever go down that road. Um, anyway, thank you.